hear me. My husband won't connect with me. But God will see me. God will hear me. God will connect me. So I'm going to praise him. Are y'all hearing me? So when that person doesn't see you, hear you, or connect with you, begin to praise God. Because he'll hear you, see you, and connect with you. Amen. Did y'all get anything out of that? She did. That's what yeah. oh, The final one because she, she named him what? Judah. Judah means praising God. Yeah. The, the praise of the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Just remember, if you praise the Lord, he will see you. He will, he will hear you and he will join with you. Go to Acts chapter 11. The problem is this. We just believe in you to say because don't want to be disciples. A lot of you want to be saved, but don't want to be discipled. Okay. Okay. Chapter 11, Acts 11. Acts 11. Too many of you want to be saved, but you don't want to be discipled. Being saved just don't get you in. you got to become a disciple of Jesus. What does disciple mean? Discipline in the ways of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. It's one step getting saved, but are you willing to get disciple? You got a lot of people. The, 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 the preacher is saved. The choir leader is saved. You know, the deacon is saved. The usher is saved. But are they truly disciples? Are they, or are they sitting there because they got their title? But let's see what the word says concerning that. Acts 11. Now you see why you need to be transparent. Don't get a title and begin to act like the title. Still remain yourself. Okay. Took me 15 years to get mine, but you know why? Because God had delivered my pride away from it that it don't mean anything. Amen. It's just another elevation to do his work. That's it. I minister while I'm standing here, but when I leave here, I'm Brother Warren. How y'all know? Okay. Amen. Amen. That's just it. I love passing the pace. When I refer to him as pastor, he said, no, nah, man, just call me Reed. See, the humility. And I said, that's why I can call you pastor. <clears throat> Amen. I can refer to you because you're not, you're not just uh, uh, wearing your title. You're wearing it as brother. As brother. Amen. Acts 11. Look at verse 26. Acts 11, 26. And it says, and when he had found him, he brought him into unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves together with the church and taught much people, and taught much people. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. That's when they were first called Christians. Did it say the same? Did it say the pastor? Did it say the choir leader? Did it say the uh, usher? No, it said the disciples were first. Verse 27. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. Jump down to 29. Then the disciples, every man according to what? His ability, determined to send relief unto who? The brothers which dwelt in Jerusalem. So if you're a disciple, you're using your gift to help someone else. Be transparent enough to walk through walk. <laughs> Don't let nobody think they've been through this by themselves. You see somebody hurt, they looking at you now, you've been delivered to them, tell them, no, nah, man, I'll tell you what. No, nah, brother, I had the same problem as you. But now I've been discipled out of it. But I'm going to give you relief to let you know you're not alone. The first step is you need to forgive yourself. The most problem with people in their sin nature, they don't want to forgive themselves. You ain't forgive everybody else around you, but you forgot the main person, you. Look in the mirror and say, I forgive you, Warren. I didn't begin to grow until so I look in the mirror and say, I forgive you for all that going and drugging and stupidity. I forgive you, Warren. Then I was able to move forward. Then it was easy for me to forgive those who hurt me, and it was easy for me to walk in love. But you got to start with you. Amen? Amen? That was for somebody else. Amen. 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 So, in Antioch, they were first called Christians, but before that, they were called those in the way. In the way of what? It was a big W called the way. So 
So they didn't have a name for them. So that was the first time you were called a Christian. But it wasn't saved people. They were disciples. So you get saved and become a disciple. And how do you do that? Get a prayer life. Read your word. Start doing things according to what the Lord said. Amen? Get a balance in your life. Amen? Amen. Let's look at two people that um, had some issues with this also. Let's go to Matthew 21. I kind of lost track a little bit, but that's all right. The Lord will bring me back. Matthew 21. See, most folks have problems with obedience, and that's why you get to decide. Most people have problems with other people. Most people know how to play the street game. They know how to appease you. They know exactly what you want to hear. They know how to push your button. There's always somebody in your life that knows exactly what button to push. Believe me. And believe me, the devil wants to send me a way to push that button. I remember I got to a place in my life where the drugs didn't bother me no more. And I bought, and my sister proud was like, boy, I ain't never going to You know, the women didn't bother me no more. You know, I got delivered from the church hurt, because the church hurt me. I got delivered from my first marriage, that hurt me. I got delivered from all kinds of friends who hurt me. But I held on to one thing, and her name was my daughter. Then one day that daughter pushed that button, boom! And that button sent me back like I never stopped. And that's when I went to go kill myself. How could I love her? And then that's when I realized the word said, unless you put away father, Mother, daughter, son, you are not my what? Disciple. But those who do the will of my father. So I allowed my daughter to emotionally affect me to the point that I went and spent a thousand dollars and got high again, put a loose around my neck and played a jump. And wind up in a mentally ill hospital because my daughter didn't love me no more. But I had to realize she didn't want to connect with me. She didn't want to see me. She didn't want to hear me. But God heard me. Are y'all hearing me? By her. Mm. Matter of fact, that one can't be pushed by too many. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Woo, Jesus. Amen. What did I say? Matthew 21. Look, you starting at verse 23. And when he was coming to the temple, the chief priest, I hope I'm in the right place again, and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, By what authority? Doeth thou these things, and who gave thee this authority? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I also ask you one thing. I love it, Lord. Oh, who do you think you're talking to? Let me ask you something. <laughs> Let me ask you one thing. Which of you tell me, I and likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things? Then he said, If you tell answer to this question, then I'll tell you how to do it. So what did he ask him in verse 25? The Baptist of John. Which was it? From heaven? Or a man? And they reasoned within themselves. Okay? Say, if we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, why did you not then believe him? See, he put them in a hard place. Verse 26. But if we shall say of men, we fear the people. See that? They ain't want to be transparent. They're being hypocrites. They ain't going to tell the truth. We just don't know. See? We, that's why they reason. Why don't you just come clean dirty and say, I don't know. And Jesus knew what they were going to say. Verse 26 again. What if we say of the men, we fear the people? For all hold John as a prophet. And they answered Jesus and said, we cannot tell. And he said unto them, neither tell I you by what authority do I these things. Now, since you can't tell me, then I tell you that. Amen. But watch what he does give them. But what think you? A certain man had two sons. Please pay attention to this. A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not. But after it, he repented and went. Y'all pay attention to that guy. His heart said, I don't want to do it. But his spirit said, I'm going to obey my father. And I'm going to do it. But at least he was transparent and honest enough to say, I ain't doing it, Dad. I ain't going to do it. Then he said, man, you know I'm wrong. Let me go back and do it. this thing, go ahead and take care of it. Right? I love that guy. I think like him. <laughs> you know, my wife told me to clean the bathroom today. I ain't cleaning it. But by the time she got home, we had new 
shower curtains, the floor was mopped, the toilet was clean, the sink was shining, the air was done. And when I, when I called her this afternoon, she said, oh, baby, you did a good job. Because <laughs> I thought better of it. My baby going to work every day. I need to be doing something. Yeah, baby. Because I tried to stay in the bed the Lord wouldn't let me. I said, your back's going to hurt, your neck's going to hurt, your mouth's going to get up and go ahead and do it. And said likewise. And he answered and said, I go, Daddy. I go, sir. And we did what? We did not. We played the game. Pull the wall over his pop's head. Yeah, Daddy, I'm doing what on there, whatever he wanted to do. <laughs> Amen. How many of you know people like that? <laughs> Brother, I take care of your mom. I got you. I got you coming. Uh, unto them, verily I say unto you that the publicans, the publicans mean sinners, and the harness, the hoes, the sinners and the whores, go in that the kingdom of God before you. Amen. Hello. Mm -hmm. Sound like the sinners and the whores are getting in before you, religious folk. Amen. Who refuse to be transparent. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, Jesus was cussing them out. <laughs> for John came unto, for John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and you believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. Amen. And you, when you had seen it, repented not after it, that you might believe him. Amen. I'll probably go with this. That's it. So here it is. They believed him, but the religious sect did not. Amen. All right, y'all ready to go for a ride here? Let's cover some real quick scriptures. The problem with most folks is they don't want to obey authority. I want you to write down a lot of scriptures. We're going to go through them real quickly because God has sent me here to teach on something that I question. And y'all can thank Mr. Edgar Steele for this. But it winds up in my sermon. And I think it fit in the right place. Because Satan was one of the first ones who disobeyed authority. So we're going to talk about Satan a little bit. But first, I want to give you the scripture of authority concerning what the Word of God says about people that you need to obey in authority. First one. Go to 1 Peter 5. Write them down. Because now that you are in the earshot of what I'm saying, you are without excuse. You are without excuse. There are some people who can just do this thing naturally. I had to study. Because I had authority issues. I had authority problems. I fucked against authority. But until I learned to obey and humble myself and submit to it, you can't be a leader unless you've been a follower. Just that simple. God ain't going to put you in leadership if you don't know how to follow nothing. You may think you need something, but you ain't need a thing. First Peter 5, starting at 1 through 4. The elder, which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ, and I'm also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, don't make it hard on the leader, amen, but willingly, not for filthy lucre. Filthy lucre, the Bible means don't do it to get paid. Don't do it to gain money. You are not to be a leader in the church to get paid. Amen. 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 Not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Neither as being lords over God's church. That means I ain't got to rule over you. Oh man, don't you know who I am? Oh, give me a break. I'll cut you out. <laughs> Amen. I should have said that, but I didn't. It's the truth anyway. I'm transparent. <laughs> Neither being lords over God's churches, but being examples to the flock. You need, if your leaders are around here, you need to be examples to the flock. And verse 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. So leaders will receive a crown of glory if they do it correctly. Go to Hebrews. Go a couple of books back. Hebrews 13. That was for the leaders. Or if you aspire to be a leader, how you should treat the people of God. Amen? Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13. Underline these. You who are leaders and you who are not leaders, please underline it. 13, verse 7. Remember them that have the rule over you. 
who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation, you follow them by faith. <laughs> what does conversation mean? Lifestyle. If they have a nasty, stinking, corrupt lifestyle, you ain't got to follow them. Hello. Amen. Especially if they if they lie. Amen. Come clean, dirty. Then they show an example of what to do. What does verse 8 say? Jesus Christ is saved yesterday, today, and forever. He's the only one that don't change. You need to consistently change. Jump over to verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourself. For they watch for your what? Soul. That's what I'm doing. That's what Pastor Rizal is doing. That's what Jeffrey's doing. That's what Brian is doing. or not. They're your authority. You ain't got the like. Obey them and then God will bless you. Amen. James 4. Put right in front. James 4. Woo! James 4. <coughs> Starting at verse 7. Submit yourself therefore to God and resist the who? Devil. And he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double Amen. Jump down to verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Amen. Y'all getting anything out of this? Amen. Amen. One more on leadership. Go back to 1 Peter 5. 1 Peter 5. One more. Then we want to talk about our buddy. We've got a little bit more time. Boy, time flies when you're up here. It really does. It might seem long to y'all, but it's like, I just started. <laughs> Amen. Start at verse 5. 5 and 5. First Peter 5 and 5. Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yes, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due service. Amen. Amen. Boy, in due time, brother. <laughs> Verse 6, 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Amen. Verse 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Vigilant means watchful. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he Amen. may be destroyed. Hello. All right, y'all. Y'all ready? Now, that was your authority scripture. But most people have a problem with obeying authority. That's why I said do a self-examination. Why, why aren't you working? Why ain't things working out for you? You think you're doing all the right things, but have you self-examined the fact that you don't have a humble heart? Who are you angry with? Who are you disobedient to? Hello? Go ahead. Bless, I like my pastor say, bless the quietness. <laughs> Amen. Go to Ezekiel chapter 28. Satan did not obey authority nor love anybody but himself, and sin was first found in Satan. Satan did not obey authority. He didn't love nobody else but himself. Amen? And what's that? Sin was first found in Satan. He's the mother of sin. Sin was first located in him. Amen? Ezekiel 28. Y'all get anything out of this? Amen. Amen. This is Satan's description. Okay? Now, actually in these verses, he was not Satan yet. His name was Lucifer. Lucifer is his heavenly name. <laughs> Lucifer is not his fallen name. Satan is his fallen name. Lucifer means light reflector or reflector of light. 
So his job was to stand next to the throne of God with a coat of jewels on, and that was shot out through all the universe. Because God is the only one who's allowed to sit in heaven. If an angel was created, he was created to do that duty. The moment he stopped doing that duty, he went straight to hell. You know why? Because he stopped doing what God created him to do. That's why they follow you around to understand this thing called redemption. Because they are not redeemed. They stop doing what they do and they go straight to hell. All you got to do is say, forgive me, Lord, and you're right back in God's grace again. They're like, what? <laughs> so let's see what Satan does. 28. 28. Ezekiel 28. Moreover, verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man. Son of man back in the Bible in the Old Testament means angels. All right? Son of man, take up lamentation upon the king of, Ty of Tyrus. Now, the king of Tyrus was an earthly being. He had been possessed by Satan. So that's Satan in the earth in the possession of this guy, this king. Okay? And say unto him, thus said the Lord God, thou sealed up the sun. Watch this. Lucifer. This is Lucifer. Ready? He was full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. That means he's smart. And it's fine. That little thing y'all see on TV with a tail and a horn and looking all ugly and beasty. Sorry. Lucifer was fine. You know what I said? Perfect in beauty. Amen. Verse 13. Thou has been in the in the in Eden, in the garden of God. See, you gotta understand something. The earth, he owned it before man was created. That's why he's mad. He was in charge of what is called the cherubim. The cherubim are like the CIA of the United States. They have four faces. Face of a lion, an ox, a, a man, and an eagle. And they are the baddest boys, angels. You can never boy. You want to over one of them. Because when he kicked Adam and Eve out, he put a cherubim in front of it so they could never be in it. Amen. Amen. Well, y'all getting a lot of meat. <laughs> Amen. I'm trying to hold myself back. Verse 13. Thou has been in the Eden, in the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. See, look at his coat. This is his coat. The covering is his coat. The sat, the, the sardis, the te topaz, the diamond, the pearl, the ox, the, what's that, oxen? And, and the jasper, and the sapphire, and the emerald, and the carbonacle, and gold. The workmanship. Now, what is the workmanship? His employment. Your job. His job. So workmanship meant his employment, what he was created to do. His workmanship of thy taverns and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. What is the pipe? He praised God. He was the choir leader. He sang. That's why he hates people who praise God and sing praises unto God. He can't stand you if you're a praise worship leader. Amen. I almost said something. I almost said that. Amen. Amen. Verse 14. Thou art the anointed. See that? Thou art the anointed child that comes. And I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of the fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created to what? Iniquity was found in you until sin was found in you. Amen. You were perfect until sin was found in you. Amen. How far are we going? Let's go to 18. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence and has sinned. Therefore, when I cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, that's when Jesus said, I saw St. Paul's light above the earth. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of the fire. Thy heart pride. Thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. I'm all that in a bag of chips. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thou has corrupted thy wisdom by reason of your brightness. You corrupted with yourself, thinking you're all that. So intellectual. You got all you got all the answers. Amen. You don't know the real one. Come on. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before the kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defied thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thy iniquities. By the iniquity of thy traffic. You know what the traffic is? Slander. You are talking against me. Amen. Since you want to slander me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Don't you know even in the world we can sue you for slander? Amen. Come on. So that's all God does. He's the accuser of the brother. 
How many times he accused you and you know you didn't do it? Amen. We know it was you. I didn't do it. Well, it's because you weren't transparent enough and honest enough, and so your family and your friends build a reputation on you as being a drudgy, an alcoholic, and a thief. So anytime, even if they sold it, they blame you. Hello.